Crafting an established fruit tree will allow you to use its developed root system and will speed up graft and fruit development. You won't need to cut and remove the old tree to plant a new one, so less work and less time wasted. Sometimes you will even be able to taste fruit in the following season, since the graft will grow very quickly with all the energy an established rootstock can provide. Don't miss the tip section at the end of the video to improve your graft success rate. Start by selecting a tree that is compatible with the type of fruit tree and fruit variety that you wish to graft. You can even choose to graft more than one fruit variety in the same rootstock. That will be an advantage in small backyard orchards, allowing you to harvest different fruits in different times of the year. Beware that, depending on the fruit varieties you choose, the tree might look a bit odd at flowering time. So, it's best to choose varieties that flower at the same time and avoid grafting too many different varieties in the same tree. Grafting a maximum of two or three different varieties is usually the safe option. This will also avoid harder problems when pruning, as you will have to manage the different vigor of the grafted varieties. Always pruning the more vigorous varieties more aggressively, so they don't take over the whole grafted tree and dry out the less vigorous. Grafting technique. The most used technique in this situation is the bark grafting technique, since it's the easiest way to join smaller scions to larger diameter rootstocks. When grafting smaller diameter branches, other techniques can be used. like the modified cleft graft or whip and tongue techniques. Be sure to check my other videos on these techniques if you want to know more. Wait until the tree that you want to cut starts to show signs of breaking dormancy. That is, some branches start to show green buds and small young leaves. Cut the branches of the tree you are going to graft. Choose the cut point accordingly to the number of varieties you intend to graft and the available scion material. Here I'm grafting three new varieties in this unproductive plum tree. So I prune the tree in the winter in a way that leaves three medium sized branches to graft. Smooth the bark using your grafting knife in the grafting areas. Make a vertical cut and separate the bark at that point using the dull side of the blade.
Some grafting knives, like the one I'm using, have a dedicated brass tongue to lift the bark. Select the cyan with 3 or 4 buds and cut the bevel on one side. Make a smaller cut on the other side of the cyan to help when inserting the cyan behind the bark. This won't help with graft healing, but will allow for a better fit of a larger diameter cyan behind the bark. Insert the cyan with a long cut towards the inner side of the rootstock, where the cambium contact will be made. With larger diameter cyans, you might need to gently tap the top of the cyan, forcing it inside the bark. Repeat the process, placing two or three cyans on the grafted branch, depending on the diameter of the branch or tree you are grafting. Tying and protecting the graft Sometimes there is no need to tie the graft, as the pressure of the bark will keep it in place. However, in most cases, it's best to tie firmly ensuring that the pressure is enough for a good cambium contact and to avoid graft breakage during the first months. You can use different tying materials to do the job, like different kinds of elastic tape or raffia. If the tying material leaves gaps, where water and air may enter, it's best to cover the graft area with an untar based pruning paste. If the temperature is already high in your location, consider adding an additional layer of protection like a padded envelope or a layer of aluminium foil to help preventing graft dehydration. Removing the protection After 3 or 4 weeks, depending on fruit types, you can check for new graft growth and you can start to remove the protection. If you graft in late spring, it's best to remove the cover gradually to let the young leaves adapt and prevent sunburn. Using dormant or green cyan wood. It's best to cut a few dormant cyans in late winter and store them in the fridge until the rootstock is ready to be grafted. This will allow for the scion to wake up slowly and receive a fresh flow of energy from the rootstock which will be far ahead in terms of sap flow. If you use a young freshly cut green wood scion and graft to a dormant rootstock, your graft will probably fail as the scion will dehydrate before it has a chance of establishing cambium contact with the rootstock but sometimes using dormant cyans is not an option, when grafting evergreens for instance. When using green cyan wood, always cut most of the leaves from the cyan. If you leave them intact, they will allow for too much evapotranspiration, that is, the cyan will lose too much moisture. Tips for better grafting results this will improve your graft success. Use a sharp knife. Always make sure your grafting knife is sharp. Cuts made with dull knives will make for poor contact between cambium layers 
and will be more difficult to heal. Leave a nursing branch. If possible, leave a branch of the original variety. This nursing branch will keep the sap flowing and will make sure the tree survives in case of graft failure. But there's a catch. You will have to keep that branch in check by pruning while the grafts start to develop or else it might dry out your grafts by sucking all the sap. Removing lower buds. Keep removing the rootstock buds that will grow below the graft. If you don't remove those buds, it can result in graft failure since the growing buds may divert all the sap from the grafts. Protecting the graft. Protect your grafts from direct sun when using fresh scions and grafting in late spring. Grafting an active rootstock. Best results will be achieved using dormant scions and a rootstock that has just started to wake up from winter dormancy. Prefer to graft when the rootstock is starting to wake up from winter dormancy and the sap is starting to flow. The bark should open easily, as long as the rootstock has an active flow of sap. This will allow for best results and for an easier graft procedure. Grafting technique tips. Making an outer bevel. To achieve a better scion fit, you can cut a smaller bevel on the outer side of the scion. This won't help in graft healing, as the rootstock cambium layer is on the other side, but will allow for a better fit of a larger diameter scion behind the bark, making the tying and protecting job easier. Don't insert the scion too far. Always stop before the inside bevel cut is below the rootstock wood. Placing a scion too low will prevent a good cambium contact. Scion Position You can insert the scion in the middle of the cut in the rootstock bark or you can slide it to one side. When positioning the scion to one side, I like to remove a very thin layer of scion bark on that side of the cut on the rootstock. Placing a single scion. On medium sized rootstocks, if you are confident of your technique and graft conditions, you can place a single scion. This will avoid the need to remove other successful grafts later on since the tree will grow better if a single branch grows from the same location. However, if the graft fails, you can lose time or the rootstock can even dry out. Pruning paste use. When using a pruning paste to cover the graft area, make sure the pruning paste doesn't enter inside the bark as it might prevent a good cambium contact and the graft might fail. Always cover entering points with tape or a similar material before applying the pruning paste. Checking for new leaves. Open the tips of the bag or open slightly the aluminium foil to check for new leaves. Leave the cover in place if the scions don't show signs of new growth. As soon as new leaves appear, you will need to open the cover to let sunlight in. Failing to do that, the leaves will turn yellow from lack of sun and the graft might fail. Tying fast growing grafts. Be sure to tie a fast growing graft to a support or the graft might break with strong winds. Removing fruits. Successful grafts can start producing the following year. Sometimes the grafted scion develops flowers and even fruits in the same year of grafting. It's best to remove the fruits 
as this will be detrimental to photograph development. If you enjoy my work, help me in producing new videos by liking, subscribing, sharing the video and leaving a comment. Be sure to turn on all notifications on your device so you don't miss my next videos. Thanks for watching.